yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's so good to have you here. The Dash Bash, where the only thing hotter than our keyframes is the North Carolina heat. Am I right? <laughs> I swear that's the only terrible joke I'll say today. Can't promise tomorrow, uh, but maybe just today. Uh, for those of you who joined us back in 2021, and you're back, I see some familiar faces out there. Uh, we're so glad to have you almost two years ago. Oh, it's crazy. Time flies, right? Or pandemics happen, one or the other. Um, and for those who are joining us for the first time, oh, you're in for a treat. In for a treat. We've got so many great talks ahead of us today. Uh, ones that will definitely make you cry, make you laugh, uh, and definitely make you rethink your approach and, and how you want to navigate your career and what you want to do, because that's what we're here for, inspiration. We want to do a lot of cool things. There we go. <laughs> My name is Matt Garrison. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and directors of content at Dash. And along with Corey Livingood, our, my co-founder and creative director. Woo! Yeah, Corey. Uh, Marin Hayes, our executive producer. And Ashley Targonsky, our other producer. We're going to co-host this event over the next few days, so you'll get to hear from a handful of us up on stage. Uh, before we jump into the goodies that will be today's presentations, a uh, couple quick notes. This evening, we are having a little after party at Industrious. It's a shared co-working space about a block from here. I think a few of you all have been working there um, this week. They've been kind enough to let anyone who's attending the Dash Bash work there. So if you haven't signed up for that um, and you'd like to, uh, find one of us and we can get you the credentials you need to get in there. So this evening from 8 to 12, we're going to have a little bit of food, but mainly a lot of drinks, uh, courtesy of Pony Source Brewing Company, local brewing group in Durham, and Trophy Brewing are both hooking us up with a lot of beer. Uh, so I hope you like beer. We do have other things there, but a lot of free beer. So definitely check that out. Uh, we also want to also want to highlight our crowdsource animation that we have going on in the back corner in the lobby. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, we basically distilled an animation down to uh, individual frames for us all to color in and then rescan up. Uh, so definitely check it out during the coffee breaks, um, before you head out for lunch, and uh, you know before you break for the end of the day. All right, <laughs> it's kind of big on the big screen. <laughs> looked <laughs> looked a little less aggressive in eye of Soren when I was looking at it on the computer. Um, you know, before we hear from the future of motion design, I think it's really important to think about, you know, what brought us here today? How did the Dash Bash happen? How are you all in Raleigh, North Carolina? I'm sure you all woke up one day and were like, oh man, the place I want to visit, Raleigh, North Carolina. That's definitely where I want to go. Um, so, you know, way before the Bash, uh, when we threw it last year, um, before our great team of creatives who are spread around, um, when it was really just... A small team, and then even before that, a couple of young guys starting a studio, and even before that, a really small couple of goobers who just like animation. <laughs> so, you know, this picture right here, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what we were doing, uh, but it was a long time ago, and this was when Corey and I were working together in an agency, and we really just loved animation. Um, you know, but our, our community was really small. We only knew folks here in the area. We didn't really know much else. And when we think about the motion design community, it just felt so massive. We felt so small, it felt really big. That all changed when Corey and I decided that we were gonna go to our first motion design conference, F5. So this was back, a few of y'all went there? Anyone go to F5? Woo, nice. Uh, I feel the same way, because we went to F5, it was up in New York, it was our first motion conference. I was so excited to go to New York. This is such a tourist move. I was like, we'll get there early, Corey. I'll buy us like a 5 a.m. flight. We'll fly up there. We'll do all the stuff in New York. Well, yeah, everything was closed. So we walked around, ate coffee and bagels, and like looked at the buildings. I mean, it was such a touristy move. So Corey still gives me uh, shit about that today. Thank you. <laughs> nice. So we go to F5, and it was, I don't know. I don't know how to put it in words. It was shocking. I was so taken back by how kind and welcoming everyone was. I mean, everyone was just so eager to meet people. You know, it reminded me of like a club or going to school for the first time. You know, everyone's here to make friends and meet new people. And so we heard from some really great speakers, you know, all these people that we like looked up to, like Aaron Swarovski was speaking there. Um, I think Patrick Clare was up there as well. Um, Rama Allen, all these people who were doing some really great things. 
uh, block and tackle, did the title sequence, I think, that year. It was super cool. So we did that. We came back, and man, we felt so inspired. Corey and I started having these conversations about, you know, maybe we could do this. And ultimately, it led us to starting Dash shortly after. So about a year later, uh, we heard there was another conference happening in New York. This time, we did not go at 5 o'clock in the morning. We went in a reasonable time. Uh, but it was called Style Frames, the art of the pitch. And this was great. Corey and I came up there, and you know, we, we had a little studio at this point. And so we got to learn a little bit about pitching and some of the documentation that goes along with it. And again, we learned a bit more and, and brought it back and put it into practice. So then came this third festival, a little one called Blindfest. Anyone here attend Blindfest before? <laughs> Woo! Ah, love the Blindfest. Very different than Style Frames, very different than F5. Uh, it was a smaller, more boutique little conference, you know. We went here, not only did we get to meet all the great people that were at Blend, but we got to meet the speakers, too. I, mean, I remember having chats with Erica Gorchow or chats with like Jay Grandin, uh, Ryan Honey with Buck, and all these people who like up until this point in my life, I just thought were these like superstars. Like, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. They are amazing, but they're also human and they're easy to talk to. And they're just as nerdy as we are. They love cool stuff. They love making great looking work. And you know, from that blend fest, we came back and our studio continued to grow. And we ended up going to that conference two more times. They had it three years. We went two more times. Uh, threw in an off fest in there, and then we also went to a lot of local and community events as well. And, and ultimately, that's what brings us to today and why we're here at the Bash. You know, Dash's growth has really coincided with a lot of these conferences, and, and so much of our success over the years can really be attributed to these events and the communities that give us support and lift us up. So when we were coming up on our five-year anniversary a few years ago, we were like, oh, we should throw a big party. We'll, <laughs> we'll call it the Bash. And then the party was like, well, you know, there's not a ton in the southeast as far as like motion design conferences go. Maybe we should throw our own conference. We could pull from some of the best pieces of these conferences we have been to, you know. So we wanted to have big speakers with really impressive work from like F5 style frames, but we wanted to bring in some of the boutique atmosphere and the intimacy that came with Blendfest because it made such a mark on us. But we also wanted to make our own mark as well. Like, what is the Dash Bash? And you know, for us. The market of motion design is changing. We are spread out more than we've ever been before. You can really work anywhere. There's new voices in the space. And for us, we wanted to make an event that felt really inclusive and made space for people who traditionally haven't had those voices on stage. The motion design community is small. It, it feels big initially, but it really is a small community. And so I think you know, the more that we're able to get together, support each other, inspire one another, and listen from people who are sort of leading the path <coughs> excuse me, to the next generation, Emotion design is important. So before we jump to the talks, I swear that'll be it and I'll get off stage. Um, you know, Corey and I, we've gone to a lot of different festivals. And I think over the years, we've learned a few things to like, make the most. So you know, how do you make the most of the Dash Bash this year? You know, what can you do from a step-by-step -step guide uh, that I would suggest? I like the sound effect with that. All right, step one, this seems like really obvious. You know, you want to be friends first. You want to make friends. I mean, that's why we're all here. We want to connect and meet other people. I'll give you a story. When I was at F5 the first time, I was, I was so eager to, like, get in it. I had all my business cards printed, and I was, like, super pumped. I was like, oh, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to win all these big jobs. And I remember at the time, uh, there was this composer, Roger Lima, who runs White Nose, Noise Lab, if anyone's familiar with him. He was like, saw me with these business cards. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's like, look, you, you can't go to these events and think about it in a very transactional purpose. You know, you got to go here and you got to get to know the folks in the space, you know, find out what makes them tick, what they're interested in, you know, what kind of music they listen to, what food they like to do. They like to travel. Are they a homebody? I mean, all these things that make up like who we are, you know, make friends first and worry about the transactions later. So you know, the thing is, is that people want to work with good people. You know, your work is good, and that does matter. You know, making good work matters. But what matters the most is that people like working with you, that you're enjoyable to work with. At that same festival, I remember Roger introduced me to uh, Wesley Slover. Wes is in here somewhere. Wes. <laughs> Woo! Oh, there you are. Hey, Wes. Nice. So Wes and I, we met at F5, didn't know each other prior, and we really hit it off. We had a great time. And Wes runs Sanctus, a, uh, a music and sound design studio. And we really hit it off. And over the last eight years, that has blossomed into a working relationship where Wes and his team has probably like, uh, you know, scored 75 videos for Dash, something crazy like that. Wes and I have been in the room like collectively three times together, maybe, uh, in the course of our relationship. But my wife and I, we came through Michigan, and they put us up at their house. And the reason I bring this up is that doesn't just happen 
when you are transactionally handing out business cards because you get to know people, you make friends, and you build these long-lasting relationships. So I encourage you today, you know, try to make some friends and get to know one another. All right, second piece. Might be a little hard for some of the introverts in the crowd. You got to speak up. You got to talk. You got to talk to one another. You know, when Corey and I were up at Style Frames, I remember listening to, you know, groups like Pez or Man vs. Machine, you know, these studios that were just doing some phenomenal work, and they had a Q&A afterwards. And in my head, I wanted to ask a question, but I was like, ah, oh, these are the dumbest questions. Like, like, everyone knows the answer to this. I'm sure I'm just covering stuff that's already been talked about. But luckily, I felt brave enough to ask, and the answers they gave were really personal and genuine. And it was a good reminder that, like, look, everyone is willing to help. Everyone's willing to give a good answer. And so, you know, when you're here today, you know, what I would encourage you is to be brave. You know, there are no dumb questions. You know, you're in a great opportunity where you're surrounded by folks who are just getting going. You have industry vets here. You know, it's a great opportunity to kind of talk through some of the things you're trying to navigate, get other opinions. You know, you're going to have some speakers up here who are going to have Q&As. Amazing opportunity to ask some questions. There are no dumb questions at an event like this. So if you are new to the event space, you know, definitely encourage you to find someone you want to talk to, whether it's a speaker or a freelancer. Go approach them. Tell them, like, oh, my gosh, your work looks amazing. I love it. I'm a big fan of you. Just wanted to tell you that. Like, that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. And if you're an industry vet, you know, if you've been here for a while, I know it's easy to see other folks that you know because you've been in the space for a while, but I encourage you to open up those conversations, bring people in, give space to someone new who's maybe sitting on the outside and get to know them. So no dumb questions. Feel good about speaking up. Stay in touch. So in the early days of Dash, um, Corey and I found ourselves in a project where we had overpromised what we could do. And with a tight deadline, we saw very clearly that we were going to underdeliver. And I'm pretty sure at that moment in time, there was no bigger pit in my stomach than there or no bigger pit in the world than there was in my stomach. I think we've all had that, like that panic wave that just like oh, soaks over you. So at the time, I didn't know what to do. So I started reaching out to different studio owners. And I was like, hey, I'm in trouble. I need some help. I can't find enough freelancers to help me. And there was one studio who not only said we can help you, but they actually took on the whole project from Corey and I when it was just the two of us. Now, at the time, it was like one of Corey and I's biggest projects we had. But for the studio, it was nothing. It was like small potatoes. But the reason they took it on is because they cared about Corey and I. They cared that they didn't want to see us fail. They wanted to help us out. And that doesn't happen unless you're really fostering relationships. You know, we have to invest in each other. Over the years, Dash and our staff, we've taken, you know, hundreds of coffee meetings, hangouts, Zoom calls, all that stuff, and tried to give advice on what we thought best we could do, just as other people have given us advice, and Corey and I, as we've continued to grow. You know, at this point, there's, whoops, sorry. You know, at this point, the best way to invest in each other is, like, lift up the work. You know, if you see your peers sharing something, share it on your social media, you know, spread it to the world that are out there. If you have too much work and you can pass it along, pass along the work, and folks will do the same to you. So it's this, you know, camaraderie that we have in investing in each other and lifting each other up. So the other thing you got to do, you got to have fun. You know, I know this seems really silly, but you got to have fun in an event like this. Look, motion design is stressful. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of clients. They ask for last minute changes. So having fun, you know, turns into, you know, have fun final <laughs> VO8 edit two. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but for the next two days, I really encourage you to be present. You know, try to cut off the email. I know there's some of you all who are working here a little bit today. The good news is, like, half the motion design industry is here today, so, you know, <laughs> we can just delay it to next week. But, you know, really being present, give yourself an opportunity to relax and hang out is all really important. So as a quick recap, uh, you know, friends first, making good friendships, trying to meet people, be genuine, get to know folks, um, speaking up, not being afraid to be brave, ask good questions, get to know the speakers you want to meet, um, making sure you stay in touch, foster these relationships, you know. I still go on to this day and think back to like F5 and some of the folks that I met today or style frames or blend. I mean, these moments are special. So definitely stay in touch. And then, of course, you know, having fun. You know, the big thing is, and I think it's something important to realize, is that whether this is your first event or your hundredth event, you know, the motion design industry moves forward because of us. It's not like there's some, like, <laughs> secret institution who's, like, deciding how motion design moves forward. I mean, it starts from conversations here. You know, studios start from conversations here. New partnerships start from conversations here. New friendships, new everything starts from this. And so as we go out in the world today, go out into Dash, 
bash, you know, make a bunch of friends, reach out to new people, and make those connections.